Hi, I'm Peter Surai. I have been working for, with antioxidants for uh, about 40 years. I uh, started from uh, uh, my PhD, devoted to vitamin E, and later I was studied other antioxidants. And um, I've been lucky, I visited more than 70 countries worldwide with my lectures. And most importantly, not only those lectures for me were, but also I got a chance to visit a lot of uh, poultry farms around the world. And I got a lot of questions. And every time I tried to answer questions, I was thinking where the customers uh, or poultry nutritionists can find those answers. Unfortunately, area of antioxidants um, in uh, poultry is not very well covered in uh, publications. And that's why about 20 years ago, uh, I wrote this book, Natural Antioxidants in Avian Nutrition and Reproduction, which became a textbook for many nutritionists in poultry, and uh, as well as uh, uh, commercial people in poultry industry uh, were using that book quite widely. And uh, a recent search on Google showed that uh, that book uh, got about more than 800 uh, citations, research citations, which means that uh, scientists are using that book quite often. And uh, my recent uh, work was devoted to understanding molecular mechanisms of stresses in poultry production. And uh, the results of our study clearly showed that at the molecular level, most of stresses are associated with overproduction of free radicals and damages to biological molecules, including proteins, uh, lipids, um, uh, DNA. However, recently, a new, a pleasant phase of free radicals appeared, uh, which means that free radicals, especially hydrogen and, and the product of their metabolism, especially uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, are involved, are shown to be involved in cell signaling, cell adaptation, activation of transcription factors, and uh, many other physiological processes. In fact, the adaptation to stresses are taking place uh, at the uh, gene levels, and those uh, redox-sensitive genes responsible for adaptation are called VITA genes, and uh, VITA genes are responsible for uh, production of a range of uh, various antioxidant molecules, and they help uh, animals, including poultry, to adapt to stress. Therefore, um, the VITA gene concept uh, was developed in the medical sciences, and it was mainly related to human health and um, uh, various human diseases. Uh, we successfully transferred uh, uh, the VITA gene concept from uh, uh, medical sciences into poultry sciences and poultry production. And uh, I have been publishing a few papers uh, on that subject. However, uh, listening to uh, poultry people uh, asking me a lot of questions, uh, I decided that it's much easier to write a book uh, to combine all recent information in one place and to uh, give a chance uh, to poultry producers as well as uh, researchers in the area of poultry sciences, avian sciences, uh, to get an opportunity uh, to have this information in one place. That's why uh, this book, uh, Vita Genes in Avian Biology and Poultry uh, Health, uh, has been published recently. It's uh, 544 pages. And uh, today I would like to update you uh, with information uh, which is included in this book, just to answer your questions why I wrote this book, partly I already answered, and uh, uh, give you a, an idea what is included in this book. So the book itself uh, actually consists of uh, uh, four uh, main parts. The first part called stresses and antioxidant defenses. The second part, Vita genes in avian biology, 
The third one, nutritional modulation of beta genes. And the last fourth part is practical application of the beta gene concept in commercial poultry production. Now let's have a look uh, at the information provided in these uh, uh, parts. So the first chapter called stresses in poultry production actually devoted to analysis of recent uh, developments in understanding of molecular mechanisms of, of stresses in poultry. And actually uh, the analysis uh, uh, which uh, was done uh, clearly showed that most of stresses at the molecular level are associated with overproduction of free radicals. So the major stresses in poultry production are divided into four categories, nutritional stresses, technological stresses, environmental stresses, and uh, uh, biological stresses. And all those stresses are responsible for decreased productive and reproductive performance and uh, uh, compromised health of um, poultry. So uh, the uh, conclusion of the chapter is that uh, today practically it, it is impossible to avoid stresses in poultry production because meat and egg production is quite uh, price sensitive. And uh, therefore we have to look at options how we can uh, decrease uh, a detrimental effect of those stresses. And that's why the second chapter called antioxidant system, systems in, the, in animal body. And that chapter explaining how antioxidants are working in the body because uh, stresses impose oxidative stress and uh, antioxidants in the body, the, the, those antioxidants are responsible for prevention of damaging effect of those uh, over of that, that of expression of free radical production. And therefore in the body there are a lot of different antioxidants, fat soluble, water soluble, uh, located in different parts of the cell, cells. And actually in my first book, uh, uh, that concept of the total antioxidant system was uh, very well described. And today what I would like to, uh, wanted to do in this book to update what is done 20 years ago. So the, uh, the information provided for the last 10 years uh, uh, actually clearly showed that all antioxidants are working together. And more importantly, antioxidants in interaction is a key for their efficiency. And uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, chapter uh, showing uh, important information on antioxidant defense network. That means all antioxidants working together. Then uh, oxidative stress and redox biology. So uh, I describe details uh, uh, redox biology in, in poultry. Then uh, I describe stress response uh, pathways and uh, oxidative stress and transcription factors. And two major transcription factors in RF2, which is responsible for synthesis more than 200 different antioxidants in the body. And another transcription factor, NF kappa B, uh, which is responsible for uh, synthesis of pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines. These transcription factors are described in these chapters as well. Uh, then uh, the part two includes the chapter three, Vitagen concept development, uh, which is uh, simply describe in details how Vitagen concept developed and uh, uh, what are Vitagens and so on and so forth. And it's uh, actually related to poultry. Then uh, in future next chapters, uh, I described uh, details of those antioxidants which are synthesized under Vitagen regulation. And uh, first of all, this is a superoxidismutase. It's a chapter four. Uh, this is a, a first line uh, antioxidant defense uh, uh, element. So the superoxide dismutase is a major antioxidant enzyme responsible for prevention of free radical formation because uh, uh, free radicals are produced mainly in uh, uh, mitochondria and there is a mitochondrial superoxide dismutase. And in fact, all three major forms of superoxide dismutase are described in this book. But more importantly, the description is done on poultry because the major work on uh, superoxide dismutase is done, of course, on mammalian species and laboratory animals. And uh, this chapter is specifically devoted to give the updated information on superoxide dismutase in uh, poultry, including dietary manipulation of superoxide dismutase. The second group of uh, vitagenes include heat shock proteins, including hemoxygenase one 
and heat shock protein 70. So the heat shock proteins are very important uh, uh, proteins responsible for maintaining proteostasis in, uh, uh, the, in the body, uh, which means that these uh, uh, proteins are responsive for prevention of damages to proteins for, uh, to maintain intact proteins with high biological activities. And these uh, heat shock proteins, uh, of course, uh, uh, were described many years ago, but today more and more information is showing that they have a very important regulatory role in uh, uh, physiology of cells. And uh, the information on heat shock protein related to poultry is uh, uh, presented in, uh, this, in this part. And also the possibilities of uh, uh, nutritional modulation of uh, those uh, uh, heat shock proteins also is described. So the next chapter, chapter six, uh, uh, called thyroidoxin system. And thyroidoxin system uh, includes thyroidoxins, thyroidoxin reductase, peroxyredoxins, and sulfuredoxin. So these antioxidants are working in tandem, and the major task for thyroidoxin system is to provide or to maintain redox uh, balance or redox homeostasis of the cell. And uh, uh, the maintenance of redox homeostasis is a key element in uh, maintenance of uh, general health. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, the uh, nutritional modulation, again, of these uh, uh, thyroidoxin system um, elements also described. The next chapter, chapter seven, glutathione system in the avian body, similar to the previous chapter, it's described in details of glutathione system, which include glutathione, glutathione reductase, glutareductins, and glutathione peroxidase. Uh, a lot of uh, information is given to glutathione peroxidase, including those non-selenium glutathione peroxidase, just showing that uh, the system of glutathione system is very important in maintaining, again, redox balance, in maintaining antioxidant defenses, in maintaining uh, animal uh, and poultry holes. And the uh, next chapter, chapter eight, is devoted to sirtuins in avian biology. And sirtuins, uh, these are very interesting and important proteins, uh, which are actually responsive for regulation of uh, many different uh, physiological processes, in including acetylation and deacetylation of various enzymes. So the sirtuin biology is very uh, quickly develop an area, and the new information related to poultry is presented in this chapter. Then we come into the part three of the book called Nutritional Modulation of Vita Genes. So the whole idea of this chapter was to present uh, or to review or, pre or to present a review of those nutrients which potentially can uh, actually modulate uh, Vita gene network. So the first one is a carnitine, and carnitine in poultry uh, known for many years, uh, but uh, uh, in general, carnitine can be synthesized in poultry. That's why there was not much attention uh, to this element uh, in previous years. However, uh, recently we started to understand that uh, the actual um, synthesis uh, uh, can be compromised uh, of carnitine, can be compromised in stress conditions. Therefore, in stress conditions, carnitine uh, could be a semi-essential essential element or nutrient, uh, especially taken to, into account that the major sources of carnitine in animal body in, for animals, including poultry, are, uh, mm, mm, are actually uh, animal uh, produced feed, uh, which means, uh, which means uh, uh, fish meal, uh, meat bone meal, those uh, which are uh, not very widely used today uh, in poultry uh, production. The next chapter, chapter 10, devoted to taurine, and taurine is a non-essential amino acid, again, known in poultry for many years, and again, is synthesized uh, in poultry. However, uh, the synthesis is not adequate to actually cover all the requirement, and uh, uh, more than 60% uh, of taurine is coming from feed ingredients, and uh, similar to carnitine, the major sources of feed uh, of carnitine of taurine in the feed are uh, uh, animal uh, produced feed. 
uh, which may again related to fish meal, uh, bone meal, meat and bone meal, and uh, because of reduction of uh, usage of those uh, uh, products in poultry diet, uh, actually poultry in stress conditions could be deficient in taurine. And taurine and carnitine are shown very clearly, uh, and I, I presented this information in the book, that they are a newcomer into antioxidant family, and they also are able to uh, regulate uh, various transcription factors and they also can uh, modulate Vita genes. The next chapter devoted to silimari. It's an extract of plant, uh, which is used in, uh, human, uh, in, in uh, um, uh, human physiology and human medicine for more than 2,000 years to deal with various problems with uh, liver. And silimarin uh, antioxidant properties are well described. And again, this chapter is in de uh, described in details how silimarin can be uh, used to deal with oxidative stress and how silymarine uh, can help to maintain antioxidant system, how silymarine can affect uh, uh, transcription factors and affect uh, Vita genes. And chapter 12 is natural antioxidants in Vita gene modulation, just showing how vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, ascorbic acid, selenium, betaine, polyphenolics, and uh, some uh, uh, a combination of these nutrients can help uh, to uh, maintain antioxidant defenses, to uh, upregulate Vita genes, to upregulate uh, uh, transcription factors, and uh, that's all about this chapter. And the last uh, part uh, of the book called uh, Practical Applications of Vita Gene Concept in Commercial Poultry Production. The idea of this chapter was to show how the Vita Gene Concept can be actually uh, used in uh, real poultry production, in, in commercial conditions of poultry production. So I collected the uh, information published in peer review journals just to show that, for example, uh, chapter 13 called Performax Concept Development. This chapter is devoted to the development of the nutritional composition, which actually includes 28 compounds, uh, which can be used to modulate uh, Vita genes uh, uh, expression and activity, and this can help to deal with stresses in commercial poultry production. And data presented uh, in, in this chapter clearly shows that yes, in uh, broiler production, in breeder uh, nutrition, in layer nutrition, uh, vitagene activation or vitagene modulation uh, by uh, using this uh, concept uh, Performax can help to deal uh, with stresses that can be economically uh, viable. Uh, the chapter 14, shell bone concept development, uh, this chapter is uh, uh, a kind of next step after, uh, 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 after Performax uh, concept, which means that uh, I described how Vita gene modulation can be used to improve actual quality and bone quality, two problems which are related to uh, poultry uh, production. And chapter 15, it's with a, with a tonic concept development, the third part of practical application of uh, uh, Vita genes. And this part is related to usage of the combination of nutrients, including silymarine, carnitine, and betaine, and vitamin B12 uh, as a, a, a hepatoprotectants, which uh, can modulate uh, Vita gene activity and can help to deal with problems of uh, liver. Uh, in uh, poultry uh, production. And then we come into the end of this book, uh, chapter 16, uh, called Vita Genes in Gut Health and Immunity. And here, the most recent information about the redox uh, potential or redox balance of the gut is presented. In particular, it's shown very clearly, or in the literature, it's shown very clearly that uh, in the gas, the redox potential, the, the balance between antioxidants and prooxidants is a very important element in regulation of the uh, gut integrity. In particular, uh, 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 microbiota plays uh, an important role in maintaining uh, that redox balance. So here, again, uh, I described in details how Vita gene modulation in the gut can help to deal with uh, uh, various uh, problems, including inflammation in the gut. And uh, this could be very important, especially in conditions uh, when uh, antibiotics are uh, prohibited. And uh, uh, this chapter is also uh, described in details how uh, Vita gene modulation can help, uh, can help immunomodulation. 
uh, and uh, to, to help to, to keep high immunocompetence. And here I put forward the idea which uh, uh, came uh, from my first book like 20 years ago, an idea about the uh, effect of antioxidants and now effect of the whole antioxidant network, including uh, vitagen network, how they affect communication between various immune cells. And uh, the idea is that uh, receptors which are responsive for communication between uh, immune cells uh, can be damaged in stress conditions. And uh, uh, by activating uh, Vita genes, uh, we can maintain those receptors in intact uh, uh, form, uh, which uh, uh, means uh, that uh, the communication between immunocells will, uh, immunocells will stay in stress conditions, and this will help to overcome immunosuppression in stress conditions. So the Vita genes can play very important roles in the gut health and immunocompetence. And finally, the chapter 17, it's a chapter called Looking Ahead. Uh, here I described how I see the further development uh, of the Vita gene concept in uh, uh, poultry uh, production. And uh, also uh, uh, I mentioned a few times that uh, this concept can be very useful uh, not only for poultry people, but uh, for avian biology in general, uh, in terms of understanding how birds are adapted to stress. As I mentioned, the adaptation is taking place at the gene level, and Vita genes are considered to be major player in this adaptation. So the book itself could be useful for many uh, various categories of readers. Uh, first of all, it would be very useful for, uh, for, uh, for poultry uh, researchers, including nutritionists, technologists, veterinarians, those who are looking for new solutions in uh, poultry uh, production. Uh, secondly, the book will be very useful for students, for students of various uh, uh, faculties, uh, in, uh, in, including agricultural colleges, uh, including medical sciences, including uh, uh, avian biology, uh, environmental biology, uh, evolutionary biology. Everybody will be able to find uh, useful information here. And of course, uh, this book uh, could be a textbook for uh, poultry producers. Uh, they can find answers uh, to many questions they have in everyday uh, poultry uh, production. So I hope uh, the book uh, will be a useful tool to improve poultry production. And I am looking forward for feedback from readers uh, and uh, I will be pleased to receive any questions, uh, remarks, comments, and thank you very much. And I hope uh, once you read the book, uh, you will be pleased with the information provided. Thank you.